refer to it as on, O-N, or, or, or ein, A-I-N, or I knew, A-I-N-U. Well, this, this first family, they were referred to by ethnic identity as the Anu, as the Anu. And so when this first ancestors descended to the earth, Osar was named the king, all right? And he was to establish civilization and, and all, of the, all of the great uh, uh, bases of the culture that we see manifest in ancient Khmer. And he was given rulership, and he selected a wife from his sister, all right, who was our set. All right, like Adam had to select, you know, Eve to be his wife. Osar, because this is a cosmogony, they're the only beings here. He selected Osset for his queen. And Set, who was Osar's brother, selected Nephthet to be his queen. So you had two pairs of royal families that took place, but Osar, Osar was considered the king and the ruler and the designer of the culture. How do you think this made Set feel? This made Set feel envious. You know, they were brothers. These were all brothers and sisters. They all, they all were born from the same womb, the age of the universe that Asar, yes, Asar, Oset, Nebhet, and Set. They are the first ones that were to descend from the star Sirius V, and they were to land in the earth at the land that we call uh, Somalia today, that the Bible refers to as Punt, that the Chemites refer to as Tanatir, or the land of God, or God's land. And so when they descended to the earth there, they began to establish the art of civilization and establish civilizations uh, and culture as we know it from, from ancient Kemet. Let me just let me just read a litany of, of some of the accomplishments that come out of Kemet. You have the calendar, you have ink, you have pen, you have paper, you have astronomy, you have mathematics, you have alphabet, you have geography, you have literature, you have art, you have surgery, architecture, you have uh, architecture that, that uh, uh, in the form of pyramids that have astronomical, mathematical, and scientific value. You know, you have oh so many, oh so many uh, inventions and contributions that grow out of uh, of now Valley civilization, too many to, to mention, but the basis of all civilization is really coming out of the now. The basis of Greek civilization is coming out of the now, Roman civilization uh, onward and onward. Um, so, Asar, he's named the king, and he establishes this civilization, and his brother Set becomes very envious and jealous of him, and his brother Set conspires to actually kill his brother, and eventually uh, uh, did uh, uh, kill his brother. And as we watch from the documentary, and as you can read in many of the uh, 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 histories of, of, and theologies of ancient Kemet, it is said that Set, when he slaughtered his brother and killed his brother, Asar, he wasn't satisfied with just killing him and letting him rest as one dead body. All right? So when Asar was slaughtered by his brother Set, it is said that Set cut Asar's body up into 14 pieces and spread them far and wide and hid them all around the earth. Why? Because you have to remember that these beings were not Johnny come lately uh, 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 mankind people like we are today. These were beings that were in touch with their with their all creative God-like powers. Alright? And so set when he killed Osar, he wanted to be sure that Osar didn't work no magic, that Osset didn't work no magic, and some, somehow just bring him back to life. And so Set thought that if I take his 14 body parts and spread them far wide, Osset's not going to be able to find where he's at and reconstitute some life in, into him. But Osset was divine, and she was a goddess, and, and, and she had these divine powers. When Set murdered Osar, when Set murdered Osar, Set's wife, Nephthet, she, she divorced him. She left, ne she left Set and joined Osset in her devotion to Osar. In a way, uh, 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 this became the, the Africa's first polygynous family. All right, so Nephthet and Osset 
became devoted to Asar, and the two of them searched far and wide to find his 14 body parts. They found 13 of his 14 body parts. And finding 13 of those 14 body parts, they might have found a leg in Syria and an arm in Arabia. And, a, you know, they found, a four, they found 13 of those parts and they wrapped, they put those parts together and tried to keep them together. They wrapped Asar up. And so Asar became the earth's, the world's first, first mummy. That's where mummification starts through our sets mummifying the four, the 13 body parts from Asar trying to trying to give him life again. So they found 13 of those 14 pieces, but they couldn't find that all important 14 piece. That 14 piece was so important because that 14 piece, that was the piece that would help to uh, uh, regenerate Asar's spirit in the present world, that before Asar was murdered by his brother Seth, he was murdered before he could leave a heir to his throne. He didn't have a child at that time, all right? And so they couldn't find that all-important 14th piece, the phallus, Asar's phallus. It was said that Seth, he had thrown the phallus into a river, and that was it a crocodile? That, that was, was said to have, uh, have eaten uh, that, that phallus and so it could not be found. And so in place of that phallus, uh, uh, Set had commissioned the building of a replica phallus. All right, and so all throughout Ethiopia and all throughout Egypt and even in Washington, D.C., <laughs> we have a remnant of, of these ancient phallus Phallus is what the Ethiopians and the Egyptians or Chemites called Tekanu. Tekanu. You see the word Anu there? Tekanu. Tekanu. The French, they call that phallus symbol, they call it the obelisk. The obelisk. And so when you go to Washington, D.C., that obelisk that you see there, that's not representing or SARS phallus. That's supposed to really represent George Washington's phallus. Or the idea, the idea that that the 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 life energy that the Washington, George Washington was supposed to create in this in this hemisphere is is the replica of his procreative force is supposed to on a daily basis, you know, make love to the heavens to try to support uh, 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 the creation that that uh, the, the British had constructed. When Marset had this technique established and built, and different readings that you will read regarding this this aspect of the history, they said that she and Neptet, she and Neptet, that they would go and they would they would meditate at the base of that technique, and through their great devotion and their great love. For Asar, that that, and through their their mantras and through their meditations and through their prayers and through their chants, that it was said that that Marset was to immaculately conceive a child at the base of that temple, and that the immaculate conception that she was to to uh, receive really the immaculate reception that she was to have was to be a child that would be born from her and also who would take the name Heru. Heru. Alright? The Greeks, the Greeks call Heru's name Horus. Horus. Heru was really created to be the hero. Alright? And he takes on the characteristics of a hero because his whole reason for being born is to re-establish the divine good order that his father, Asar, had established, that his uncle set through chaos and disorder and violence and evil 
had established. You see, Seth's reign is a reign by...